everybody, Nadia Harper here from MakingHealthyChoices.com and today I'm going to show you how to make homemade nourishing face cream or moisturizing body lotion. This is a really beautiful recipe that I've been making for years. I've made it for a lot of people and people really love this cream. It is a really light, luxurious cream that is nourishing and gentle enough to use on this beautiful skin under your eyes as well as on your elbows, on your heels, and just your entire body. It's beautiful. I love making this because it is so much nicer to know the ingredients that I'm putting on my skin. All of the ingredients in this lotion are completely natural, completely non-toxic, and absolutely nourishing for your skin. So the first thing to make the lotion is we are going to use one part of oil and then one part of uh, water or a liquid element. It's really important to have not only oil but also a water element in your lotion. You want the water to be able to draw those oils into your skin. That's what gives you the best moisture. If you use only oil, so say for example you only use coconut oil, that's great too but oils are going to sit mostly on the surface of your skin. They don't get absorbed as much. When you add some water to your lotion, you get a nice, fluffier, lighter lotion, and the water tends to draw the oil into your skin. So to start, you're going to use three quarters of a cup of liquid oils. I'm using almond oil today, and you can use there are a variety of liquid oils that you can use. Almond oil is wonderful because it is um, an all-purpose oil in terms of moisturizing. It is great for all skin types and it really across the board is a wonderful oil. It creates a really nice light cream that I really like. All the oils you want to choose, you want them to be the best quality you can get. Cold pressed organic is what you're looking for. So today I'm using almond oil for the liquid oils, three quarters of a cup of liquid oils. And then you're going to have a quarter of a cup of harder oils. And for the harder oils, I am using coconut oil, cacao butter, and shea butter. And so if you can see here, we've got the liquid oils right up to the three quarter mark on this cup. And then I'm going to add in the harder oils to bring that up to a, the, the one cup mark. So this is a really good quality uh, cold pressed organic coconut oil. So I'm gonna put some of that in there. And oops, as you can see, I don't really measure anything too much and you don't have to be too exact with this recipe. You really wanna make it your own and that's what I always suggest. Sorry, I spilled some coconut oil there. That's what I always suggest with all of my recipes is remember that recipes are only suggestions and I want you to use the recipe for inspiration, but then become inspired by the recipe to make it your own. This is shea butter. Shea butter is a beautiful, um, really nice moisturizing oil. It's a really nice moisturizing fat. And just like when I'm thinking about the foods that I'm eating, I like to get variety in the foods I'm eating. When I'm making body care products, I also like to get variety in my body care products. So when I'm making the the moisturizing lotion I try and use a variety of oils so that my skin can benefit from a variety of different oils so we just need a little bit more to bring it up to the one cup mark I'm gonna add some cacao butter cacao butter is the fat from the cocoa bean which is the chocolate bean and this is a really nice really thick fat it smells like chocolate which is amazing it'll have a really nice element to your moisturizing lotion you don't want to add too much of, of the cacao butter simply because it is a really hard fat and if you add too much over time it can rebind to itself in the lotion and you'll end up with these hard pearls in your lotion which you don't want. So try to keep the cacao butter at a smaller amount in your lotion. Okay, I think we just need a little bit more to bring it up to the one cup mark and I think I'll fill up the rest with coconut oil. Coconut oil is just one of my favorite oils. It's so versatile and so nourishing for your skin. It also has antifungal properties, which is really nice to have in a body care lotion. Okay, so that is just at the one cup mark, which is just what we want. And then the last thing you're going to add in 
to this oil mixture is some beeswax. And what I have here is a half ounce of beeswax. And you'll dump that right in there. And then you want to melt these oils together. And you're going to do that over a very low heat. And so what I've done here is I've created a bath of hot water. And you put your heat resistant bowl right there and you're going to keep this on a very low heat and allow all of these oils and waxes to melt together. Now this step, you can actually do this step the night before because after everything is melted together, then you're going to take it off of the heat and you need to allow it to cool to room temperature. So I have done that already. I prepared this last night. And these, this is the same mixture of oils that has been heated, melted together, and then I've allowed it to cool to room temperature. And if you see, this is how it looks when it's melted together and then cooled. It's this beautiful, thick oil mixture. This right here is a really nice massage oil if you wanted to use this just as it is it's beautiful but what we're going to do next is emulsify some liquid into this to make it a really nice light cream and the water component that i'm going to use is a hydrosol so i make a lot of my own hydrosols and the one i'm using today is lemongrass hydrosol so there is a video on the website where you can learn how to make your own hydrosol. And this is what I usually use to make my lotions. I got my one cup of oil, that, my one cup of water, which is my lemongrass hydrosol at room temperature, and my one cup of oils that is also at room temperature. The, I'm gonna do one thing before I blend these together is I'm going to scent my lotion with some essential oils. Now you can use any essential oils you want. Essential oils are amazing for their antimicrobial, antifungal properties. They also will, will help to preserve your lotion so that your lotion will last a little bit longer. You can use any ones that you want today, and I mix this up all the time. Today I'm using a combination of frankincense essential oil, patchouli, and ylang ylang. These are just um, three scents that I really uh, like a lot, but you can use anything. Lavender and peppermint are nice mixtures. Um, some uh, frankincense together with myrrh is really, really nice. You just wanna play around with the essential oils until you get something that you're happy with. When you're adding the essential oils, again, as you can see, I'm not really measuring. I'm just um, putting some drops in. I've done this so many times that I'm sort of familiar with how much I want, but basically you can um, start with about five, five or six drops of each, stir it up, and then see how that smells to you. And this is where you're really going to engage your sense of smell. So I've added in a, several drops of each one of those, and then I mix it up and I smell it. And it smells pretty good, but I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more frankincense in there. And what you're aiming for here is you're aiming for a scent that is a little bit stronger than what you want your finished lotion to smell like because once you add the water portion, it will, the, the smells will get diluted a bit, right? So I'm going to add a little bit more frankincense in there. And let's give it one more stir. Yeah, okay, so I really like the way this smells. Okay, now the next step is the most magical part of this whole process. This is where we're going to combine the water and the oil. We all know that water and oil don't typically mix. So we have to engage a little bit of magic to help this to happen. And the way we're going to do this is with a blender. I'm using um, a stick immersion blender. You can do this in a typical blender as well. You can use, I've done it in my Vitamix blender. I've done it in um, cheaper, you know, like 10, $20 blenders. It's worked like that. And uh, an immersion blender like this will also work. So any method of blending will work. And what you're aiming to do here is you're going to drizzle the water in very slowly as you're blending. And this is where the oil molecules are going to combine. They're going to emulsify together with the liquid molecules and you're gonna end up with a beautiful, fluffy white cream. That's the aim. Some people have told me that they have um, had problem getting their oil and water to mix. My suggestions are making sure that everything is the same temperature. I think that really, really helps. And making sure that you're pouring the water in nice and slow. I think if you pour it in too quickly, that can uh, cause some problems when you're getting them to emulsify. 
So I'll ask you all to send some good energy as I'm doing this. And this is that's another really good point. I always put energy into all the recipes I do. Anything you make, whether it's food, body care products, cleaning products, make sure that you put love as one of the main ingredients in everything you make. It really does take everything you make up to the next level. So when I'm making lotion, I try and put I try and fuse love into every step and especially in this step when I'm blending it all together to create the final product. Okay, so here we go. There you have it. There is your finished cream. Try not to over blend. If you over blend, what can happen is your cream can break and the molecules that have binded together to create that beautiful cream can then separate and you'll get liquid floating on the top of your cream. If that happens, that's your cream isn't spoiled. You can still use it. You just wanna sh uh, stir it up or shake it each time before you use it. But if it emulsifies properly, you're gonna end up with a beautiful cream just like this that is nice and white and fluffy. You can see the consistency of it. It's just really nice. And then when your cream is finished, you the, because this cream is so rich in beautiful nourishing ingredients and it's got such a high liquid content in it, you really don't need much. So that amount right there that I have on my finger is probably even too much, but that amount or even smaller than that is enough to do your entire neck and your face. So let me just see how it feels. I always like to test everything after I do it. Put it all over. And with cream, this cream, it is not going to feel oily at all. So I put that on and it just feels really nice and silky on my skin. It will get absorbed into your skin very quickly and then you won't be left at all with any sort of oily residue. It's a really, really beautiful cream. When you're finished, I like to bottle my cream in glass bottles. I always like to use glass. And I like to use these nice, these little bottles are really, really nice because you can keep just a little bit of your lotion out for as you want to use it. And this is this cream right here, if you were to go to a high-end beauty shop and buy face cream, a little pot of face cream like this could cost, oh my gosh, I don't know, maybe 40, 50, 70, 80 dollars, who knows? This stuff is really expensive. And in my opinion, what we've just created here is so much better than many of the things you can buy in the store. Completely nourishing on every level. Um, so I like to keep it in glass bottles. This will last a very long time. I've made uh, lotions like this that have lasted weeks and months and you want to uh, do a few things to ensure the integrity of your lotion to make sure that it will last a nice long time and one of the things I do is I keep small jars like this in our bathroom and this is what we will use on a daily basis the remainder of the cream I will keep it in a bigger bottle like this and I'll keep that aside so we're not putting our hands we're not opening this bottle all the time when this runs empty, then I'll just fill it up with some more from the mother bottle. And also another thing I do is I try not to put my fingers inside the bottle. So I use a little wooden spoon and then I'll just take a little bit out with a wooden spoon each time I wanna use some. And then that ensures that you're not introducing any bacteria from your fingers into your cream. That just helps to let help it last a little bit longer. Remember this is food, so you wanna make sure that your helping it to uh, maintain its integrity and its freshness. So that is the cream. I hope you really enjoyed the video and I hope that you will make this cream at home and enjoy it as much as we do. Thanks for watching.